Hey, what's up guys? This is Bravo. Today I have some Halo 4 gameplay and I'd like to address some details that I did not get to discuss during my E3 videos. These include details from the guys at 343, things that were discussed at both E3 and MLG Anaheim, and also some extra details that are very interesting but really have not yet been discussed much to my knowledge, so many of the details are exclusive to this video. Also, my sponsor Gamma Labs is now offering free samples of their new energy drink, which has been modified for gamers. They've removed creatine and have new flavors, so please stay tuned at the end of this video if you'd like a free sample mailed to your house, totally free of charge. So first of all, this gameplay is some neighbor POV on Drift, and watching this gameplay really makes me want to play Halo 4 again, and I'm very pumped that I will be able to play again this coming weekend at Rooster Teeth Expo in Austin, Texas, and also the next weekend at Comic-Con in San Diego, so I know I'm very, very lucky, and I'll be bringing you guys Halo 4 videos and news every day from both of these events, I promise. So this video will also demonstrate just how overpowered Promethean Vision is, even though Neighbor barely takes full advantage of it, uh, that's probably because he had a radar, but without radar, it would entirely change the game, but we're not really here to discuss just that. I did my best to jot down some notes of things that I remember being discussed at E3 and MLG, so here is some more info and some confirmed details. The first thing is that the control schemes may indeed change, and that 343 was looking for some feedback on these at E3. I think this is great. As many people know, we, can, we were confused as to why the bumper driver layout might have been changed. And as you know, everyone's a BJ fan, so everyone wants to see that back. 343 also asked us why we thought ranking systems were so important. They asked if it was just a bragging right, and honestly, a lot of the 1 through 50 system was about bragging rights and pride. It's based off of beating other people, and I was glad to hear that they were asking why it was so important, because they really want to delve into the entire ranking system, and that's very promising for us and especially competitive players. I've discussed this a bit in my other videos, but there are clear problems with the 1 through 50 system, and uh, to know that 343 is really spending a lot of time on this system is great, and I can't wait to see the ranking system that they have for us. I also found out that each category of ordnance drops in Infinity Slayer uh, is random, as in one eighth of the time you might get a needler, one eighth of the time you might get a sniper, etc. However, we did learn also that the drops are tailored to the map. So, for example, on a very close range map, you might not have rockets dropping in the ordnance drop. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, I'm not exactly sure how that might play in. Uh, if it's a non sniper map, obviously that's going to throw off the ratio a bit, so we're going to have to wait till we'll see how all that plays out. Next, it was 100% confirmed that the logo art medals will indeed change and spawns. Uh, this is something very interesting that I got to discuss uh, myself, Gandhi, Bestman, and Nexi sat with some of the 343 guys at MLG Anaheim, and we had a very lengthy discussion, uh, which included a lot of talk about the spawn system across all the Halo games, which is a lot of fun. You had Gandhi taking a napkin and a cup and a fork and explaining the Halo 1 spawn system, um, but grenades will influence where someone spawns in Halo 4, as will looking at a spawn. Uh, but this does not necessarily mean that if you grenade and look at a spawn, someone cannot spawn there. It just means that these actions will severely influence where they spawn. Uh, so the game will then try to put that person somewhere safer. So if you guys think of it as a, a point system, if someone is, if there's grenades blowing up in courtyard and someone's looking at the courtyard, the chance of that spawn is very low. So it's going to try to push another spawn and see how safe that spawn is. So it's a very advanced algorithm that has very, you know, fast calculation to determine where someone spawns, but those two factors will influence spawns in Halo 4. Also, they've added more spawns to offer players more safe options when spawning. They found that just simply adding more spawns will allow you to have better spawns throughout the rest of the game. And the new system, they say, is much more intelligent than previous Halo games. So really looking forward to the Halo 4 spawns. We've already heard a lot of pro players praising the spawn system, uh, finding very few problems with it. So uh, excited to see how that plays out also. And I'll be bringing you more details on the spawn system after these next weeks of playing the game. Also, they discussed something, uh, loadouts. If... Whatever you choose, your loadout might, you know, base your role in the game. And this seems a little bit like we saw that in Halo Reach, where, you know, one person might have a jetpack because they're going to run a flag. But that obviously is more objective-based and big team-based. Uh, and we really didn't see that in competitive play because loadouts obviously were not really a part of the game. So imagine if one person has the hard light shield and pushes forward, and two others have thruster packs to flank around, another person assists with Promethean Vision. I found it very interesting that 343 said that when they were playtesting various scenarios, um that people were actually choosing their loadouts based on what their team had. So you can create this kind of like Superman team who has a whole bunch of abilities that's impossible to beat. So that could be another thing that, to be honest, we if we use abilities in competitive play, could fit in. But I know there's a lot of people who do not want to see any of these abilities in competitive play. So we're going to see uh, how that plays out. I learned also that 343 uh, played the game for around four to five hours a day, which I think would be the greatest thing in the world. Uh, we can also count on the game being balanced very well. And Kevin Franklin mentioned that any god mode abilities, imagine if something's way too powerful or the rockets are, you know, have way too much splash damage, that those abilities and 
uh, functionality of the weapons would be nerfed. So it's great to see that they're going to be looking at balance throughout the game, uh, throughout hopefully throughout the entire lifespan of the game to create a great competitive title. The game's weapons will have a high difficulty curve, according to 343. Uh, also, the human shotgun was not at E3, but it is in the game. And I asked specifically one guy at 343, I said, does the game have fall damage? Because I honestly hadn't noticed any. And one of the guys responded with, well, did you see any fall damage? So my answer obviously was no. So it's looking like there is no fall damage in the game. Uh, we also asked if you'd be able to get multiple kills with one BR spread. For example, in Halo 2 or Halo 3, when you aimed into Pink 2, for example, on Midship or Heretic, you could sometimes get lucky and get two kills with one burst. Uh, they said technically that something like this might be possible, but it wasn't really planned or thought about too much. So that pretty much covers it for the details uh, that I wanted to also discuss that have been left over that I wrote down in notes. Now we're going to take a look at this game. There's around seven minutes left right here on this game of Slayer on a Drift. So we're going to be taking a look at what Neighbor's doing here now with the battle rifle. Um, score is pretty close in the game. So now as he's hovering around, this room right here was the center of a lot of action. There's a lift right here. Players get trapped in. You can get in crim crazy melee battles right here, as you see is about to happen. And uh, Neighbor is able to pick up that kill there. Uh, you see how quickly that shield recharges as he goes ahead and sprints around. The sprint looks very similar to Halo Reach. Now, still not using a lot of Promethean Vision right here. As you take a look, most people, when they come around these corners, were really using a lot of Promethean Vision, and Neighbor's not doing that here. And obviously, he runs into two people there, and he had a teammate there. If he had used Promethean Vision in a situation like that, obviously, would have seen those two people, could have acted accordingly, could have totally changed what he was doing, could have prenated. Lots of options there when you're using Promethean Vision. So as you see here, once again, players spawning right there in the lift room. Um, and still two guys around that corner and not using much Promethean Vision. Uh, but he does have a teammate there, grabs an assist, so he'll likely push in and get this kill. Take a look at the hit markers on the BR. You see they're pretty accurate as he was missing a few shots there. Those hit markers did not light up, so that just a little bit indication that the hitboxes in Halo 4 might be you know very accurate and it's nice to have those hit markers in this game because no more do you have to play online and think to yourself are these shots hitting are they connecting are they counting at all as you see neighbor here changing his look sensitivity right there um, just trying to see how everything feels in the game obviously this was his first time playing the game this was everyone's first time playing the game using a little bit of Promethean vision there and challenging across the map see those BR battle those excuse me those BR bullets as they come around that spread actually has a lot of trail if you will you can actually see those bullets and look at how advantageous that is he sees that guy coming around the corner sees this other guy so now really starting to use Promethean vision a lot more perhaps really only understanding just how powerful it was at this point during E3 so nice shots there and might be able to get this reload and still clean up this kill nice headshot there um, he sees another player there. Surprised he's not using Promethean, but I guess he has radar there. That's something that I mentioned earlier. If you do have radar, Promethean vision becomes a lot less important. So that might really be why 343 had said originally that he doesn't, that they don't think, excuse me, that people are really going to be using a lot of Promethean vision. But if you think about an MLG where there is no radar and it's really teamwork based, I'd say you'd see Promethean vision out of every player at almost all times that they could. Um, unless there was a specific situation, for example, a bunch of players dead and they don't need it. Otherwise, it's so useful there. So now he just use it till its end, see how they're rolling together, and then he checks around the corner. So really can't be said enough how powerful it is now. Up top control here, you see a lot of players, especially Hoaxer on the last gameplay that we posted, Hanging out around there, you have an excellent vantage point on top middle. You can quickly get away from that angle. You can shoot into rocket spawn. You can shoot down there. You can quickly flank around to the bottom. So this tunnel right here, if this map, uh, when the game comes out, you're going to see a lot of people fighting from that top angle. Really, as it's almost a sniper perch up there. You can really just take down anyone. You can sprint to top middle and totally change your vantage point. So not surprised there. So here's neighbor. Quickly switches off Promethean Vision when he finally sees someone. And looks like that should have been a back whack. So that brings up another point. I wonder how the back smack hitboxes will be in this game. Everyone knows in Halo Reach that you could get a back whack from one side, and it would be a back whack. If you hit someone straight in the back on the other side, it would not be a back whack. Obviously, a uh, terrible inhibitor of competitive play when you think you should get the back smack when you're right behind someone, you don't get the assassination, uh, which is definitely really annoying. So we're going to have to see if those were finely tuned. We know the game was very much rebuilt from the ground up in Halo 4. So uh, there's a good chance, and I'm hoping that all the hitboxes, including the melee hitboxes, are very much adjusted now. So now taking a look at the score, 410 to 370. Uh, and they were here sprinting right off the start as well. A lot of pros have said that they really don't mind the sprinting here. So we'll take a look and maybe figure out why that is. One of the details is obviously because when you are sprinting, you do get slowed down. Um, so that does take away and Less people can get out of situations that they shouldn't be able to get out of when you are being slowed down. So that's great to hear. And also when you're shooting a player who's coming at you with a sword, that person will slow down, especially if sprinting, which is a nice new detail that really favors competitive players and better players will win there. Players can't just run around with the sword. So you see neighbor there had to chase down a kill pretty hard there down bottom middle. There's a lot of junk down there. 
as he's going to go right back up. You don't want to spend too much time on an area like that on a drift. I'm really excited personally to play this map when the game does come out. A lot of people are saying it's not fit for competitive play. However, I think really if we have an open mind, it could possibly haven absolutely, but this map could still be possible. But I mean, look how far that Promethean Vision just went across the map. I think that's one detail that must be nerfed. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think. I think that's one ability that has to be toned down and made not as powerful because as you saw, he just pretty much looked across the map and through the walls. Um, really, it takes away the amount of teamwork that's necessary. When you think of Halo being really an advent of Halo 2 with Xbox Live voice chat, everyone started to use voice chat and then first-person shooter with really Halo 2. Uh, obviously, Counter-Strike was available for the Xbox at that point when Halo 2 dropped, but Halo 2 is such a huge title for the Xbox. And to take away that need for communication when you're using Promethean Vision, you don't have to rely on your teammates' communication anymore. You can simply look through walls and just really play alone, play this free, almost Call of Duty-esque, which is not what we want in a teamwork setting. So now 480 to 410, a uh, few minutes left in this game. You see Neighbor here with a teammate, once again hanging out around this top area. They're going to be able to fight together. Look at that. He comes around the corner with Promethean Vision out. It doesn't work for him there because he gets doubled, but that might be extremely advantageous too when you just want to get the first shot on a player. Honestly, when you turn a corner, it's hard to get that first shot, but if you have Promethean Vision on before you turn the corner, that might help you get the first shot, and then you can immediately turn it off. So as you guys have seen, increasingly throughout this game, Neighbor started barely using Promethean Vision, and towards the end of the game has really started using it in almost every play. So that's good to see, and that's also indicative of just how powerful it is and I realize this commentary has become a lot of Promethean Vision discussion but I think at this point that's really all you can talk about in a gameplay like this so some impressive play out of neighbor right here might go for a melee actually decides to drop down let's see how this ends up uh, tries to fight from that angle uses Promethean Vision once again to see how that player back down um, so that's another way you can use it honestly to see if a player is going to drop down on you or not if a player is going to poke out around a wall as they all spawn outside here and they move in. And honestly, this room, a lot of people have talked about the physics of the game along with the textures of the map. So honestly, there's a lot of different bars here. And as you see, that is a defeat. Uh, that will wrap up this gameplay. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned earlier, Gamma Labs is giving away free samples to anyone who watches this video. All you have to do is go to facebook.com slash Gamma Gamers, click on the free samples button, write in that Bravo sent you and also put in your shipping address. You can choose one of the new three flavors and what you'll be getting is the new Gamma Labs formula, which has creatine and arginine and a few other things removed. Stuff that athletes needed, but we didn't. Uh, so really awesome of Gamma Labs to accommodate those needs. You can now try that product absolutely for free. So I hope you guys take advantage of that. It would really help me out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. Thank you for watching. Peace.